Hi everyone, Pepper Spray Patty here and wanted to talk about um, an, another aspect of boundaries that I haven't covered yet, but um, this is actually what I do cover about boundaries in general in uh, my self-defense classes. And we start out by talking about predators and the predator mindset. Uh, and just to preface that, the reason that we talk about uh, predator's mindset is because it's important to understand the enemy that you're potentially up against. And the more information that you have, you know, that old saying, knowledge is power, um, the, the more ability that you have of being in control of the situation, because that's really what it comes down to is who is in control. And that's the first component of predator mindset is that um, this is a crime about power and control. This is about an, a person wanting to have power and control over another person. Now, we can get into a million reasons why. Um, but what matters is that, um, that we understand that there are people out there that are looking to take advantage of other people and particularly taking advantage of their weaknesses. And so when we just define, um, our enemy, our predator, the attacker, as someone who's looking to take advantage of the weaknesses of others, that really encompasses all of the different types of enemies that you will come across. Now, specifically when we talk about self-defense and in my classes, these are um, assault and abduction prevention uh, workshops. It's important getting into that predator mindset to realize that the majority of times that a woman is attacked by a violent offender, it'll be someone that she knows. Now, a really good example of this um, is sexual assault on college campuses. Within a year of doing this, getting involved, starting Pepper Spray Patty, and creating this mission of empowering um, women to confidently defend themselves and teens also. I had a few opportunities to work with uh, college-age sexual assault victims. And it was really heartbreaking. And so it got me thinking, why? Why are the statistics for college-aged women so much higher than the rest of us? And it's not just on college campuses. It's that age that particularly uh, 18 to 24 your old women are four times more likely to be sexually assaulted. It really bothered me. And so I, you know, going through my mind of everything that I've learned and everything that I know, why? You know, because finding a solution requires understanding, you know, where the problem is. And this is what I came up with. You know, up until that age, we talk about stranger danger. We talk about, you know, the van rolling up into the neighborhood, driving slow as it's rolling down the street and all of a sudden it sees, you know, a yard with a couple kids and it gets a little slower and it's creeping down the road, you know, watching them and the side door opens and, you know, someone all dressed in black, you know, jumps out or, you know, is dirty or, you know, we have these typical pictures in our mind of what the bad guy looks like and how things will happen.
And so I thought, well, but it's different. Why is it different for these college age girls? And basically, <laughs> um, to get this, <laughs> to get this going, uh, basically, what I came up with is that that is the most vulnerable age. And I think that as statistics are coming up, we're going to start to see that 14 to 24. That's going to grow. And that 14 to 24, where high school and college age um, young women are um, four times more likely to be sexually assaulted. And it's because who is their attacker? It's somebody that they know. You know, college girls, you know, freshmen, sophomore, um, just getting away from home, from high school, something totally different. They're all excited about integrating into it. And what are they doing? They're making friends and they're meeting all these new people. But everybody that they're meeting are people their own age. It's their peers. It's their classmates. And who is it that is raping and sexually assaulting these girls, these women at this age? It's their peers. And it comes down to one word, trust. Because if there's anybody that you're going to trust, it's going to be the people that are your own age, especially when you're first getting out in the world and experiencing life and dating and, you know, maybe living in a whole new place, you know, all these different things. We gravitate towards the people that we're familiar with. And especially when you're somewhere completely new, who is it that you're the most familiar with? It's your peers. And predators are taking advantage of this. And so this is not just college age, but just in general, um, you know, attacks, particularly um, when it's a violent crime towards a woman, it's someone that she knows. I mean, let's think about the statistics. Around 85% of rapes are acquaintance rapes and 57% occur on a date. So why is a predator looking, um, attacking somebody that he knows or they know? Well, that's because it is easier for them to manipulate their victim and the circumstances when there is um, some level of trust and familiarity. So if it's somebody that you have like some form of a relationship with, and in my self-defense classes, I give the example of being at the gas station at the little coffee station making coffee and someone comes up next to you and as they're giving you a compliment, touch your shoulder. Now, majority of us think something like that and regardless of whether we think, well, that's really odd that they touched me or, you know, we don't even acknowledge it or we don't, you know, you know, whatever the, that we're thinking about something like that, majority of us don't say anything. We may ignore the person. We may, you know, give them a weird look, especially if you haven't had your coffee yet, um, and move away. You may, you know, grumble something, whatever. But here's what I want you to start thinking about, and this is when it comes to having that um, that warrior fighter, that warrior woman mindset. Is what if that's a test? Okay, what are you talking about? What do you mean a test? Well, predators are out testing their victims. Hi, Karen. They're looking for, they're looking to see what your responses are. And that's because if, if they come and touch my shoulder and I look like I'm uncomfortable with that, but I don't say anything um, or whatever. They're, they're looking to read my face, my body language, and whatever words come out of my mouth. And using that information, they're going to determine how easy of a target I am. Whoa. 
Is that something that anyone, you know, has, have you ever thought about that? That something small like that. So let me play the scenario out for you so that you fully understand how, like how this could possibly be a test. Because I'll tell you, when I first started to um, learn self-defense and understand this concept, it really racked my brain that holy smokes, like this is freaky, this is scary that they're, you know, someone would just come up and touch my shoulder just to see how easy of a target I am. Like, but yeah, it could be um, a casual conversation uh, or it could go into verbal harassment, it, just invading your space, um, different things like that. But ultimately, the predator is looking to cross your boundaries deliberately um, to see what your response is and how confident you are at standing up for yourself. Kind of like an interview. A very scary, sad, dangerous interview. Are you going to pass the interview with flying colors? Well, this is where boundaries come in. What are you okay with? What are you not okay with? If you've never thought about what if a complete stranger, you know, has physical contact with me, touches my shoulder, then you may not know what to do in that situation. And if you struggle with boundaries or your confidence or your voice or all of the things that we talk about in the Set Boundaries Boot Camp, all of that empowerment and that strength, if there's any weakness there, this is the moment when it's going to come out and that's going to let somebody know. Let that predator know Hmm, this might be an easy target. Depends what they're looking for. So here's what happens. Something like that where someone comes in and just touches your shoulder. First and foremost, you have to know what your boundary is. Are you okay with that? Everybody's boundary is different. If you're okay with that, then that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Then you just... You know, you will, you will, if you're okay with it, then you will respond naturally. If though you're not okay with it and you decide not to say anything or um, not actually, ultimately in that particular situation, the best way um, if you're not comfortable is to state that to the person. And you can do it very simply by just saying, thank you for the compliment, but I would prefer if you don't touch me. It's not rude. It's not, um, it's not bitchy. It's not mean. It's not anything like that. Um, it's just stating a fact. So you state that fact to that person that you're not okay with them touching you. And that's how you put your boundary out there. Now, here's the thing though, is are you prepared for that? The more confidence that you have in yourself and the more practice that you have of setting boundaries and standing up for them, the easier this will be. But you have to do that. You have to do the work. So what can you do? Well, like I said, most people won't do anything, won't say anything, or they'll do something other than say what they're thinking or feeling. And that can be read all over our face. So what happens if that is your response? Well, let's play this scenario out. Whatever you say, it doesn't matter. You could say, thank you for the compliment. You could say, you know, thank you. You could just kind of look at them. You could give them, you know, a, a strange look and and move away you could just completely ignore that they were even there i've seen that happen or they just like don't even flinch that somebody even spoke to them and they you know move on you pay for your coffee you go out to your vehicle and just as you're getting ready to get into your vehicle you hear a noise and we know when someone's talking to us and you hear someone yell, oh, excuse me, miss, excuse me, miss. 
And there you are standing in the doorway of your vehicle. Look, and you look. And here's that person. Now, because we had that interaction with them, we've developed in even if you did absolutely nothing, even if you completely ignored that they talked to you, grabbed your coffee and started working, walking, it doesn't matter. There was still an interaction. There is now a level of familiarity. And in. That's why predators test their victims because it is so much easier. The more the higher the level of trust that we have, the easier it's going to be for me to manipulate the situation and easier to have control over you. When it comes to safety, this is why boundaries are so important because we don't know. We don't know if it's just somebody who is chit-chatty and over-friendly and just wants to pay us a compliment. We don't know if the person is harmless or if they're not. We don't know if they're testing us because they want to scam us or they're testing us because they want to hurt us. We don't know. And there's too many variables to try to figure it out. That's not our job. To say, well, is this person dangerous? Do I, well, I don't have, I don't have the hair standing up on my, on the back of my neck. I don't have that awful gut feeling. I just, I just feel uncomfortable that this, you know, person is talking to me and, or touching my shoulder. There's not these huge sirens going off. Okay. So it doesn't look like it's a dangerous situation. But knowing that there are people out there that are looking for easy targets, that are looking to test, to see how vulnerable you are, I don't know. I don't know when I'm being interviewed. I don't know when I'm being tested. So I'm always prioritizing my boundaries. It's kind of the best way to say it. Um where it just doesn't matter if, if I'm not okay um, with that person doing that and makes me feel uncomfortable, then I'm going to say something. And I'm going to be confident in me and confident in that because it has to do with my self-worth. Why wouldn't I tell somebody that they made me feel uncomfortable or that what they did is not okay? I... Like, all the reasons why people don't say something are all the reasons why you should. Well, I don't want to seem rude. First of all, you're not going to seem rude because you can be polite. I don't want to offend someone. I don't want to upset someone. This is why we have boundaries. Your self-worth. All right, you guys. There's your knowledge for the evening to chew on. Remember, if you liked this or got something out of it, please do me a favor and hit the share button because if you got something out of it, someone you know will. And we're talking about safety and boundaries and something that isn't being talked about enough. So please share this video um, share what you liked about it, a comment below, you know, give me a shout out, say hello. Um, whatever you do, have an absolutely wonderful evening and stay safe.